Welcome to the Bulletproof Cashflow Podcast, the go-to place to gain financial freedom through real estate investing. Here we interview investors, mentors, and entrepreneurs who share their secrets and advice to help you build passive income. Let's get into the show. Hey everyone, this is Augustino. Many in the military sacrifice years of their lives to protect our great nation. And when they return from serving our country, they often need to rethink how to support themselves financially when entering the civilian world. Well, today's guest had this experience firsthand as an Army Special Operations veteran who grew up in central Iowa before attending college in California. He developed a passion for educating the military community on how to create long-term wealth through real estate investing while personally investing across the country over the last 14 years. So he co-founded Active Duty Passive Income and is a senior managing partner with ADPI Capital. In addition to all that, he and his team have opened up a nationwide employee-owned mortgage branch, a real estate brokerage house, an insurance company. He's done a lot of great stuff here, but all this with the goal of serving the ADPI community of military real estate investors. With all that, I'd like to welcome my good friend, Eric up Church Show Show. Hey, Eric, thanks for coming on, man. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, it's going to be great. Humbled. You've had some amazing guests. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you like what Eric has to say throughout the show, you can reach him via his website at activedutypassiveincome.com. And of course, if you like our content, please don't forget to leave a comment and rate the show. And finally, text the word FREEDOM to 202-410-4202 to receive our free ebook, The Bulletproof Guide to Finding a Broker. Okay, Eric, go ahead and tell the listeners about how you got started with all this real estate stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I just want to say again, I'm really happy to be here because, and I hope that some of your listeners and viewers can get some value bombs out of this really. Um, I started kind of similarly to a lot of military uh, folks do, uh, you know, when we're moving from one duty station to another, we'll often buy a property uh, with a VA loan, which allows us to buy hundred percent leveraged. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, uh, zero down. You can even roll in the VA loan funding fee. And these are all things I did. We bought a new construction property, actually bought it while I was in Iraq on my first deployment. And uh, my wife was at home and she signed all the docs and stuff. But um, we weren't looking at that property as an investment at the time, which now looking back, we get to teach people to do that every time that they buy in the military. So it's an amazing thing. But so, um, so back then we bought it and hundred percent leveraged and we ended up moving, actually getting out of the military and thinking, okay, well, that was 2006. We got out in 2011. So the economy was on the way up, but we were still like, okay, we can't really sell this property because the equity is not really there. It was in a, a, a town in Georgia. So we ended up renting it out for several years. And I was like, well, man, we're making you know, 80 bucks a month. This is kind of cool. They're paying our mortgage and we're cash flowing 80 bucks. Now looking back, you know, like, like nobody's going to do that. Cause the first time your, your uh, air conditioning unit goes out in Georgia, you're, yeah, you're, out, you're <laughs> lose done. months and months and months of, <laughs> of right. quote unquote cash flow from, from that unit. But again, we weren't looking at that property as an investment. So, um, so then we go, but the, I knew that there was something there, right? Then I read rich dad, poor dad. I went to uh, a, a couple seminars and uh, got some, started reading books and not only real estate books, but mindset books and just kind of getting my mind right and in the right mind frame. Didn't really know what I was doing at the time and dabbling with like tax liens and uh, private lending at one point and live in flipping and some other stuff and just kind of making my way through the weeds and learning as I, as I went. Um, so the way I really got into real estate investing was by accident. And, but then several years later, I was intentional because I was learning about all of this, all of these different things. And I said, well, how can I, I can't flip a house in the San Francisco Bay area right now. This is 2014 say now. So, and I had just gone to this, this seminar and I'm like all fired up. I'm like, babe, we're going to be investors and we're going to flip houses in San Francisco and San Jose. And you know, just that mentality of you leave a boot camp and you're like, oh, this is going to be amazing. But we realized that people are overpaying. People are paying $2 million for a million dollar house, even then, you know? And so, okay, we can't do that, but what can we do? So we have the power of the VA loan. So we bought a house um, for 500K. It was the, actually the cheapest thing we could find in the market they were looking at at the time. And, uh, it, but it was beautiful. And so through market appreciation from 2012 to 2014, it rose in value significantly. So we sold it. We kind of did a double take at each other. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did we just make money 
sell, buying and selling our own house that we lived in for two years? Yeah, but that was market appreciation. So then we said, okay, now how can we take that and maybe tweak it a little bit to do it again? So we bought a house, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Monterey Bay area, but down uh, near Santa Cruz, a couple blocks from the beach. So great location once again, nice. but we forced appreciation on that one. For your listeners who don't know what that is, is we renovated it. We pushed the value up by making that little beach bungalow. It was actually a four bedroom property. We turned into a three bedroom, which most people wouldn't do, but we were looking around very intentionally at the, at the neighborhood and said, okay, well, a lot of people are moving here that are retiring because it's on the beach. Who wouldn't want to live on the beach or near the beach, right? So within nine months, that property appreciated 250K. Wow. So because we had our eyes wide open and because we were deliberately taking action and we were, because we were deliberately learning about real estate and networking along the way and meeting the right people. In fact, the guy who renovated the property for us, I met at that flipping um, conference yeah. and he just said, I won't take any, any contractor fees. I'll just pay my guys and buy materials. And I, you know, so it's a lot of Home Depot trips for me and using my veteran discount at Home Depot, but 250 K in nine months. So we sold that one, then went to another market and did it again. And, and so we did that three times in the Bay Area. So pretty, really blessed, but also anybody can take those kind of principles. If you are somebody who can learn, network, I always say add value to others as well along the way and take action in a, on a consistent basis over five, 10 years. This is the, the long play, right? You can have massive success in this industry. And we were able to leverage what we had which was the VA loan and now, which is what we're teaching a uh, portion of what we're teaching to, to really capitalize on that. So that was a mouthful, but man, it's, I'm so excited. Well there's, well, there's a lot there. So, so the first thing though is the mindset. I mean, yeah. that, that's, that's the baseline. That's where it all starts because 100%. If, if the mindset's not there. If you're not even aware if they're if, just like you said, I mean, many, and many people that come out to our live events too, they're, they're working on house flips. They're working on wholesaling. They, they, they want to do multifamily, but they're not doing the training required to get there. Absolutely. But, but you broke out of that. Yeah. Right. And so, and it sounds like though, the way you broke out of it was just by going to events, going to seminars, maybe even getting some, some training, right? Yeah. I mean, you got in front of some people and listen, showed you. I am a guy who, uh, who bought the, you know, went to the 90 minute free thing on a, on a, on a weekend or on a weekday, then, then paid 2000 bucks or whatever it was to go to the weekend boot camp, And then I got upsold to the advanced training. That was, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that I couldn't, you know, it was hard for me to afford um, at the time. And, but, but I didn't, I didn't, you, if you're going to do that, I, I recommend doing those things if you can afford it, if it's not going to stretch you, but if you're intentional about never ever quitting. If you're intentional about going into those things, into a training event or a conference with an intention, I need to, I need to learn this. I need to ha add this person to my team. I need to figure out this one little missing piece. So you can do all this research all on your own if you want for years. But unless you go out and, and actually interject yourself into a community that's doing it, you'll never make that step. You'll never get that first multifamily. You'll never get that first mobile home park. You'll never get that first flip or whatever your thing is. Right. So now huge firm believer in coaching, in conferences, in uh, masterminds. I'm going on a mastermind um, later this year with some people who have been on your show as well. It's, it's, it, it, it's the way to go when you're at that level. But you either, even if you're just going to a three day boot camp pay for the thing and get your value out of it because you can find value in it. Absolutely. But what, what it comes down to is, you know, for, for many of the people at work that the 40 hour job, you're surrounded by people that are doing the 40 hour job. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is how it is. This is what yeah. we do, right? We, we're going to work our 40 hours. We're going to get a two weeks vacation and yeah. that's it. That's all we're going to do. Yeah. When you change your, the, the group you're hanging out with that now they're doing multifamily, they're doing big deals or whatever the case may be, change, you change your, you change your overall mindset that way too, by, by hanging out with those sorts of people. That's that, that in itself is huge. My mentor says proximity is power. You probably hear that all over the place. Right. Yeah, that's but, right. but you know, I have to say too, uh, let's go back. I, as, at the time of this recording, I still have a full-time W2 job that I've had for, this is going on my 10th year since I've left the military. I have a wife. I have two kids. Last year we bought 571 doors with teams of people, obviously. 
yeah. uh, first full year in, in multifamily. So for people out there going, man, yeah, it, it's too hard for me. Or it, no, it's time blocking. I put my kids to bed. I read to my boys every single night. It's my job to, to, to hold this family tight. And um, I need to make sure that that's not lost, nor is my W2 commitments, my job. And oh, by the way, we're, we're running, you know, active duty passive income is this, even just our Facebook community is approaching 10,000 members. It's a private Facebook group. And you know, all of this, all this other stuff that goes along with the mortgage company, all this stuff. So for those of you out there going, yeah, but where do I start? It starts by learning all you can so that you can at least intelligently talk about these subjects when you're in a group. The next thing is get your butt in a group. Go to a boot camp, go to a conference, go to your local RIA, go start a meetup. If you start a meetup, you can become the SME, the subject matter expert, just by taking the bull by the horns and starting a meetup. But you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Go to someone else's meetup, you know, and just put yourself out there. But you know what, though? I think, I think the difference, though, is that you actually committed, though. That's the difference, yes, right? 100%. You, you, yeah, you're committed to it. Even though you're doing the 40-hour thing, I think you're working from home. I think when I met you yeah. in Los Angeles, right? So you're, you have yep. some flexibility with that. But I'll tell you, man, commit. I mean, one thing that, that we, that we, that we as humans, we need to realize is that we are, what we see around us is what we believe is capable. That's it. You know, and if you change that real estate <laughs> where you're located and get yourself in front of other people that actually have a, a better outlook than you, yep. that's how you, that's how you build your network. Everything around you is, is influencing you on a daily basis. I've got my vision board over here that says, give $1 million. That's something that I'm looking at all the time. If I can give away a million dollars a year, I'll be doing okay. I mean, yeah. We're going we're gonna to end veteran homelessness this decade. And the systems are in place and we're working with Veterans Community Project and it's amazing what they're doing. So, but I mean, my kids even know. My kids know what daddy's up to. I'm holding up a million dollar fake bill, but it's in my peripheral vision all the time. That's right. And it's not about the money. It's not about the toys. I don't have toys. My truck has a ripped seat in it. <laughs> um, and, and that's intentional. Everything I'm doing is intentional, right? Um, but so feed your brain with the things that you know can happen and they will put two zeros on your goals and watch what happens. That's right. hundred percent, hundred percent. Now t tell, talk a little bit about the, the, the one thing that many, well, I'm not sure how many, but many people that, that, that come home after serving our, our nation that they don't, they don't even know that they could get loans for yeah. these assets, right? And I think in your case, though, I think when you bought that asset, that house was a single family and you didn't intend on really renting it out. And I think there's, isn't there some sort of stipulation around that? Like you have to, you have to like live in it or something? Yeah, like that yeah, or? yeah. The, with the VA loan, it's an owner occupied loan. So um, you have to have the intent to occupy within 60 days. So okay. yeah, you need to live in it. So um, we could buy a fourplex and then yeah. live in it for a while, then, you know, change your mind and go live somewhere yeah, else. Yeah. So, so check this. So check this out. What, what's amazing is, and we've actually seen people uh, say buy a fourplex and then, and they close on the fourplex and then they get orders to PCS or permanent change of station to another duty station or they deploy. So they, then all of a sudden they have four, four tenants in their fourplex. They never even moved in to the thing. And you, you don't have control over when your orders come. Situation changes. So um, you can also roll in a VA loan uh, funding, uh, rehab loan, sorry, and, um, and actually update it. I've, uh, I know somebody who bought a triplex and the renovation took longer than expected. And he actually never even moved into the place because he needed a place to live. So he had to get a lease somewhere else. So, um, you know, imagine this for a second. If you're a young lieutenant or an or a E5 sergeant in the army or something like that, and you move off post, first time you move off, off your duty station, uh, and you're collecting basic allowance for housing, um, for, for living, for living expenses. So when you go off post, say you buy a fourplex, then you rent out the other three, you're living in one, you're essentially living for free and, and probably cash flowing at a, on a fourplex. Then in... X amount of some people, some lenders will require maybe you to live in it for a year, but that is not a VA stipulation. That's not a VA loan stipulation. That is a lender stipulation. So lender to lender, there are some things that have to happen, but it all it's a case by case basis. So you have to research that ahead of time. Research right? that ahead of time. Absolutely. Yeah. And we do in-house lending now too. And so we we're kind of getting into that. And, um, but so it's, it's very interesting because imagine in a 20 year span, someone who serves their country can go, can maybe PCS 10 times and have 40 units 
that they put zero dollars out of pocket on that are all cash flowing if they do it right 40 wow. units no money out of pocket it's an amazing asset and and you know no, nobody except the United States, anyone who served in the United States military can do that. So there's no limit to the number of houses you can get. Cause uh, I guess for some, for some lenders, uh, at least for civilians, there's, there's a cap, I think, right? 10 yeah. units or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. There's always going to be, you know, but there's ways to do, you know, use land trusts and commercial lending. And once you ah. get to a certain level, you know, um, refinancing and tweaking some things, you can even, uh, re, every time you move, re, refinance it to a conventional loan and then free up your VA loan eligibility again. Nice. So there's all kinds. And actually now, if you have a free and clear VA loan eligibility, meaning you don't have other, um, you don't have, say, $500,000, you know, of, of apartments, you know, invested or fourplexes invested. If, say, you're down to zero and you have you've been no apartments in a VA loan right now or units in an apartment, there's no cap anymore. You just have, you have to qualify for the loan. Debt to income still has to be good. You'll have to qualify through right, the lender. Right. But right, right. it used to be that you were capped at $417,000. So for me to buy in the San Francisco Bay Area, that wouldn't right. work. It wouldn't work, yeah. But there's a higher threshold in 66 or so counties at that time. But now it's just gone. You yeah. still have to qualify for the loan. So it's still safe uh, to protect the veteran and, and everything. But um, yeah, so it's, it's an amazing thing. We wrote about it in our book, uh, Military House Hacking, and, which is free on our website. Yeah. Yeah. So guys definitely check that out if uh, you need that kind of help for sure. So t talk a little bit about management though, because it sounds like getting into a deal is very easy, but how does, how does someone manage a fourplex? It's like in the middle well, of nowhere. I mean, how, how do you well, do Well, I mean, a lot of these installations are near, near major cities. So there'll be property management companies. Uh, I always recommend that people don't self-manage because if you're deploying, the last thing you want to do is be responsible for something happening when you're in Iraq or Afghanistan, you don't want, you don't want something to go down and not have, you know, boots on ground, ground, so to speak, covering your butt. So oh, when you're doing the underwriting on even a fourplex, duplex, whatever it is, make sure you account for seven to 10% property management costs in there. So that, that's one of the big things that we're teaching is like, look at every single one. And no one's, no one's doing this by and large. Look at every single purchase in the military as a future investment, analyze it that way. So we're now educating a network of, of realtors nationwide and working with, you know, starting to work with National Association of Realtors and some other stuff to start educating realtors the real way on not just, the, um, not just helping a veteran get a VA loan and buy a house. No, they need to look at that as a, an investment property day one because chances are down the road, um, it's going to be. And I'll say too, it's appalling. It's amazing to me that only about 13% of eligible veterans are using the VA loan. Oh yeah. I mean, you don't even know. I mean, it's, un it's unreal because the military is, the military is, is, uh, is, is, is in charge of training war fighters, right? They're not in charge of teaching financial foundations and success and retirement and all these other things. Yeah. They have retirement, you know, TSP, a thrift savings plan, which is like a 401k, but they don't, they're not, it's like they, they teach that type of uh, strategies and, and retirement stuff, like on the, on the cusp of a four day weekend, you know, yeah. they'll do like a safety brief PowerPoint and they'll say, Oh, by the way, if you put 300 bucks a month in your TSP, uh, you know, in, in 30 years, you'll have a million dollars. Okay. But there are better ways to do that that are well-traveled and Oh, by the way, the U S military has this unique advantage that we should be all using. Well, I think part of it is, is that that financial education, it's not only just for the military, it's everyone. Everyone's got yeah. the same sort of problem, right? I mean, I, I have to learn all this on my own. <laughs> yeah. No one showed me multifamily. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but to pick it all up. Yep. Right, right, right. So earlier you mentioned that you got into 570 doors, right? Yep, yep. Talk a little bit about that. Like, so, so what's your role in that, in, in that venture? Yeah, so uh, I'll just talk about the last, the last two deals we did. So I, first of all, I bought coaching. And, um, I was, uh, I'm a, when I make a decision, I'm like, there is no, there is no failure for me because I will never quit until I achieve something. It's almost like, I just want to get my money's worth. Right. You can think of it that way too, if you want, but you have to decide, burn the boats. Uh, that's another thing my mentor says, burn the boat. You have to be willing to say there is no other way. And I do this and I, I say this, uh, pretty often, but 
you got to have a strong, deep rooted why. And mine is, I, I do this. It's interesting because I'll, I'll say this is part of my unit, my, uh, unit creed. I serve with the memory and pride of those who've gone before me for they love to fight, fought to win and would rather die than quit. So if my, if my why is for the people who can't struggle anymore, the people downrange who are having a hard time and can't invest right now, the people who have passed, they can't feel pain. They can't feel struggle. They can't feel success. So I feel like part of, part of what I do and what we do at, at ADPI or Active Duty Passive Income is we involve military real estate investing and mentorship, but with a passion. Like there's a reason behind it. I mean, ending veteran homelessness. I'm not doing it for money. Um, we're doing it because there are lives to be changed. And if you have, if your listeners and viewers have that deep rooted why, they, you can achieve whatever you want, but you have to decide. You have to make that decision and say, there is no other way, but this way. That's I right. am a real estate investor. And, and, I and am. that's a big why. And that's a big yeah. why. That's a huge why. I mean, there's so many, so many veterans out on the streets, some of them. It's just unbelievable. It's, it's just sad. Yeah, it's, they're, they're about, you know, estimated 38 to 40,000 homeless veterans, but it, that is not a huge number. I mean, in relatively speaking, uh, compared to the, you know, millions that are homeless, right? Or whatever the num that number is. So it is a, it is a, that, that problem right there is achievable. We are going to fix that problem. And, uh, and I'll, I'll just give another plug for veterans community projects is they're building these tiny homes in the, in communities all across the U S right now, permanent tiny homes, not on wheels. And they are completely transitioning. And then, Oh, by the way, our book is going to go in every single one of those that the veterans can take along with them and go, Oh, if you want to buy a house, you can buy a house with zero down. You need a job. And a lot of the homeless veterans, by the way, have jobs. They're just right. down and out and don't have a roof over their head. If you've got a job, they can help you build your credit up. And then you can go and take our book and read about how to use your VA loan and get off the streets permanently. It's an amazing thing. Yeah. 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 And there's plenty of people that need that help too. That yep. absolutely need that help. Yeah. So, so this deal, so is it, uh, Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So five, five five seventy. Yeah. <laughs> Err, reverse. Okay. So, uh, I'll just talk about the last two. So we, so a couple deals we did with, with, uh, with other partners, these two deals, last two deals we did by ourselves, it was an 80 unit multifamily in Indiana and then a 71 pad mobile home park in uh, Southern Indiana as well. Um, so, I was doing uh, early 2018 with a good friend of mine. Uh, uh, we were doing some single family fix and flips in Kansas City. And we just, every time we'd refinance, we we're like, gosh, this is a real pain. Like, this is hard. There's so many documents they're asking for and like, come on. Oh, and then by the way, the tenant decides not to pay their bills this month. And <laughs> then, then, then you're making no profit on that property. You know, so like, okay, then I went to a, a, a multifamily conference and I'm like drinking through a fire hose, but I'm like, it was a light bulb. Oh my gosh, you can scale and you don't have to be a billionaire to buy multifamily. Like a normal right. guy like me can buy a multifamily apartment. You're kidding me. So yeah. So now, you know, fast forward, it's been, I've been in multifamily now for less than two years, like just over 18, like 20 months or something. Um, and yeah, so this last couple of deals were great. Um, another thing we do that's unique is we dedicate our properties to a local medal of honor recipient and have a whole ceremony. Re, the, the mayor's going to be there and some congressional people. And so we're trying to give back to the community as well um, as we buy these assets. So I don't know if you want to deep dive into the assets themselves, but I'm kind of talking superficially. About well, them, but... we'll talk, talk a little bit about that. That's interesting. So basically you're, you're getting, you're turning into a community event whenever you're actually doing a closing, even on like an 80 unit property, you're doing yeah. like a, a big shindig about it. Yeah. So Memorial day, we will be out at, uh, out the property. I inv invited the governor, the, uh, there's going to be a proxy for the governor himself of Indiana at the event. Uh, it's going to be a potluck. The mayor's going to be there. Um, uh, district 35 uh, representative is going to be there as well. She agreed to come. And I'm just going to say some remarks and anyone can talk as well. And it's, it's, there's going to be bounce houses for kids. We're going to, in the spring, we're going to be renovating the playground for the kids and adding a community garden and a dog park. And we're obviously renovating the units as well. But and there's a school across the street. So we're inviting the school, the teachers and the, you know, anyone who wants to come over and just have a good day. And we're putting a plaque, I'm making this bronze plaque and we're putting it on a stone in the center of the property where the flagpole is. And we're just having a day where people can come together and talk about, you know, someone who served this community, who was born in this community many, many, many years ago. But it's just one way to say, hey, thanks for those who've served. 
And, you know, not a lot of people are trying to bring communities together and interacting anymore. So one thing that we do that's very unique at ADPI Capital is to, to dedicate our properties to a Medal of Honor recipient. Um, if there isn't a local Medal of Honor recipient, we will go to a Silver Star recipient. And chances are you can find somebody locally who's a, a military hero um, that is either well-known or can be researched. Right, right, right. I, no, I love that strategy because it, it engages the local community. So, yeah. But what happens after that then? Do you, do you go with any through like rebranding strategies or anything else like that? How do, how do you take that momentum and apply it to the property to, I guess, increase valuation? I know it sounds like a yeah. terrible thing to ask. No, no, no. I mean, uh, look, <laughs> but, optics, I mean, you, it's a business too, right? Yes. So uh, optics is important and, you know, it, it, no one should feel bad about bringing a community together. No one should feel bad about making um, the old lady in H68's apartment nicer, you know, like, no, right, 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 it's right. like, so, so, and, and no one should feel bad about adding a, a dog park that's safe for kids. So they don't, you know, get bit by a dog or, or adding a community garden or doing some of those things. So, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just little things like that, but also um, putting new signage for sure. Um, area beautification, we call it in the military, you just clean the place up and making it look, um, look nice. But then um, also, um, you know, the, the leasing office or whatever, just a comfortable and nice place. And, and then the Facebook group, holy cow. If your apartment complex doesn't have a Facebook group, I mean, I'm not going to be an, an admin in there probably because they don't, the, the residents don't need to interact with me, but give it a facelift, you know, put, let, let there be a place, even if, even if residents go in there and gripe, actually don't even allow that. Maybe, maybe just have it a place, a bulletin board, a place where residents can go and look at what's coming up instead of posting stuff. Cause that, you don't want people complaining about, Oh, my water's off or Oh, what's well, going on with that tree. If, if they're, but if they're going to complain, at least they're going to complain in a, in a, in a private group. And it's gonna, gonna yeah, but, it <laughs> yeah. And, but you also, like I say that because you want them, you want them complaining to the leasing agent, <laughs> you know, like, right, 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 walk, right. walk into the office and, and tell her, <laughs> you know, that, that, that something's wrong and we'll get it taken care of the same day. You know, that's right. That's right. That's so. right. No, well, no, because, and I mentioned that because it's the strategy that we, we employ at new assets that we take over. Like we'll, we might do uh, a beginning of summer, you know, residence events yeah. to thank them and have a, have a barbecue or whatever, you know, get yeah. people engaged, That's great. Get neighbors, get neighbors talking because yep. we do it because if we can get neighbors to become friends, chances of them leaving goes down. Absolutely. Right? Because, because now that lady in, in what you say, H1C or whatever, the old lady yeah. in H1C yeah. now has a friend on, you know, whatever H2C. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she, she won't move away. Yeah. Right. She has a friend there, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. There are so many strategies out there too. I mean, I've heard people saying, yeah, if you add a popcorn uh, machine to the leasing office, then the kids will always want to go in there. And when the kids are in the leasing office, you know, that gives your, your leasing agent an opportunity to say, Hey, uh, Martha, uh, you haven't paid rent yet this, this month. I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, there's all kinds of things, but then the, the kids love it, you know, donuts, cookies, fresh coffee, popcorn, whatever it is. It's uh, relatively inexpensive and makes people just enjoy being at your place. But, yes. but certainly um, actually there's a golf course that's to the South of the property. So um, about 20 of our residents have golf course views and, um, so we're going to work with them to use part of their land during certain times to bring like taco trucks out and some other stuff too. So just big wide open area where we can have events, you know? Yeah. yeah and they have yeah. movie nights. That, that's a great one. In the, in the summer in the Midwest, you, you can get those big inflatable um, movie screens. That's They're right. like a bounce house material movie screen and just yeah. play a movie night. I mean, they, used, they, they do that at KOAs and kids love it. Adults love it. I mean, the, uh, those, uh, those, those projectors cost nothing. They're yeah, like hundred totally. bucks or less than yeah, hundred yeah, bucks, you yeah. know, and you just throw that up on there and you could just do that like uh, once a month or something during yeah. the summer months. Because right now in Indiana, it's cold there. Oh yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's more like a May to September type of thing. <laughs> right, 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 right. So now are, are you targeting like Indiana? Is there, are there certain places that you like better than others or what? Yeah. We kind of fell into that market, uh, which is nice. And we're getting a lot of leads and we have a lot of contacts there now. Um, but we also like Georgia and the Carolinas. So we're kind of looking in several different markets and, and really just focusing on areas that we know uh, there are boots on ground. We have reliable people there that can help us with property management, due diligence and all that other stuff. So. Right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. Because I actually used to live in Indiana a long time ago in Indiana, oh, cool. Indianapolis specifically. Uh, I like that market, but it's also very much inflated depending yeah. on 
you know, who you're, where you're going. I, I feel like, um, I, you know, as I'm traveling around the country talking to people, it doesn't matter if you're in a primary or tertiary market. Everyone is saying, oh, it's too hard to buy a house right now. Oh my gosh, it's too hard to buy an apartment. Like every single town USA is <laughs> inflated at this point, depending on who you're talking to. So you gotta, you gotta, like they say, kiss a lot of frogs to find a deal, but it's a lot of times just about who you know in the community that can help you. Yeah. I mean, this is why this is why I have lunch with the mayor of, of every town we buy in. This is why, you know, we we tell people we're a group of active duty and veteran military real estate investors. We believe, in fact, here's a little a little uh, tidbit uh, for your listeners. We'll send a YouTube video with our LOI that says, we believe veterans should own as much of America as possible. We are veterans and active duty service members buying apartments to bring communities together. So have something, have some unique, and anyone can come up with some unique niche, something to pitch, um, you know, the, the potential sellers and uh, just be unique and add value to everyone you talk to and you can get more deals. You have to maybe kiss a little less frogs that way. Interesting. Interesting. So in your, in your video LOI, I think uh, Grant Cardone talks about his video LOI as well. So are you just covering? He doesn't like need just, to do it. He doesn't need to convince. All he needs to do is put his face on there and go, Hey, I'm Grant Cardone. <laughs> I want to buy your, I want to buy well, your, your, your building. I, I got to interview Grant Cardone this, this year on our podcast. It was, it was, it was like, talk about drinking through a fire hose. You got to let him, you got to let him go. You know, you got to <laughs> let him talk. <laughs> but one thing he does, he does, he does the video LOI. I think for yeah. many people, like myself included, I still do the old fashioned traditional presentation of, of yeah. an actual LOI. Sure. What do you, what are you presenting when you do your video LOI? Like oh, what so sort of we're, 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 we do traditional, I mean, you got to do the paper LOI as well, but sure. to, comp, to accompany the, the paper LOI, you basically just send the broker, the YouTube link, the private YouTube link, you know, um, to the seller. And it just, it just says exactly what it said. Hey, you know, my name's Eric Upchurch. I'm with ADPI Capital. We're a group of military and, you know, active duty and veteran uh, military investors and our mission is financial freedom for those who serve. We have an education platform, but we believe that the United States military members, people who have served should own as much of America as possible. And so and it's kind of short, you know, it's maybe a one and a half, two minute little video about who we are, why we're capable and uniquely suited to, to buy this property and uh, to close. And anybody can do the same thing. You just have to find something unique about your team. That's right. That's right. And well, and what's, what's more though, is that if you, if, let's say, for instance, your, your counter is set to 12 because you may have circulated it with your business partners, whatever. They just stay off that link for a little while. You can actually see how many times they open that link. Yeah, absolutely. You can see, yeah, yeah. gauge their interest. You can gauge yeah. their interest. You know, the bigger yeah. the deal is, the more important that is to know that it's like they, they really take you seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So that's, that's, a, that's a great, great, uh, uh, great uh, tip for, for you guys out there, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So what do the next five years look like for your business? Where do you guys see scaling this thing? Uh, so we are going to be in the next five years, a uh, better, cheaper, faster uh, provider for uh, loans than USAA, Navy, Fed, any of those big guys that are servicing uh, military, um, military buyers and, uh, and investors. Um, our education platform is going to be top notch already is in the military space. Um, and honestly, just growing our presence, um, we were just featured on military.com yesterday, which is, which is a huge, I mean, there's 9.4 million, uh, viewers on that page in the military community every month. Uh, so it's really just, we want to be as big as possible to influence as many people as possible in a positive way. So in five years, I see us, uh, dominating the military real estate investing space to a point where we're a household name. And that people see us, know us, see our faces, feel comfortable, feel good, knowing that um, you know we have everyone's best interest because we are them. Yes, yes. I, but what you guys are doing is just awesome. And thank you. The, the more people you can touch, the better. Better life is going to be for all those people. One hundred percent. All right, guys. Well, if you want to reach out to Eric and check out his his book and all that great stuff they're doing out there. Go to this website, activedutypassiveincome.com. Hope you got inspired. Hope you got a lot of good insight on, on what, what, they're, what they're up to. Thanks for your time, buddy. Greatly appreciate it. Man, thanks for having me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the Bulletproof Cashflow Podcast. 